Okay, for our 1.3 practice A, there was two parts to do on numbers one and two. The very first thing that you had to do was identify the segment bisector. We had talked about this in class and it was in our notes as well. In the case of number one, the segment bisector of segment A, B is line D. The only way you can identify this segment bisector in number one is by writing line little d. I don't have two points on it to name it. I'm gonna go over here for my segment bisector. The segment bisector number two is ray ML. So you make sure you have those parts. And again, when I go through your papers, I'm just looking to see that you've done it all. I haven't graded it. So you guys need to figure out now if you've got this down. Every group of problems, make sure that you're considering, all right, do I know what I'm doing? Now the next piece that we have to do in these is find, it says find AB, which means it's the length. Well, on number one, if this is 15, it's congruent to MB, this is 15. Please make sure that you're writing AB equals 30. Change that if you need to. I would expect that you would write AB equals 30, not just having a 30 there. Go ahead if you need to get up. 5.5 for AM, since MB is 5.5. AB is gonna be 5.5 times two, that works out to be 11. Again, I would expect to see AB equals. This chapter is all about the basics of geometry and the thing that we've learned is the most particular is all of our naming. So this was yesterday, which was the 20th. All right, now, same idea with numbers three and four. We're gonna wind up using a little bit of algebra here. If you need to rework a problem or you know you struggled with these, use a piece of lined paper. I'm actually gonna use lined paper when I do the problems. First things first though, segment bisector. On some papers I had to circle things because I didn't see it done. First things first, segment bisector. We have a line in number three, and in this case, I don't have a lowercase letter, I do see two points. So for number three, the segment bisector needs to be identified as MR. Number four, segment bisector is simply a point, point M. Now, since the segment bisector splits the segment in a half, like we talked about and had some examples in our notes, like for number three, we're gonna set, since these congruent marks are here, that means that I can set x plus 12 equal to 8x minus two. Now, there's lots of ways that you can start solving this problem. My choice is gonna be to subtract x from both sides. If you didn't start by subtracting x, just sit tight, because really, we can come up with the same, oopsie, 8x is minus, and x is 7x. Even if you started it a different way, you still should get the same x value that I have. I'm gonna undo and add seven times, 14 is equal to seven times x. I keep just working down. Oh. Divide both sides by seven. Keep lining up my equal sign. On the right-hand side, it simplifies to x. Bring my equal sign down. Now, in the case of this problem, x is equal to two. But that's not the end of the problem. So you have to go back and find st, which means that you have to go back and use the two in the problem. So s to m would be considered to be two plus 12 or 14. 8 times 2 is 16 minus 2. I knew it should have been 14. And then I got to go and put it together and say S to T is 14 plus 14 or 28. So just make sure that you follow through with all of that, that you solve for X and then you go back and use it. That's a, there's a lot going on in that problem. That's kind of, you know, what I've talked about in terms of high school. We've got multiple things. You got to make sure you're reading your directions. There you go. And see that would, if you did half of that, you would have amounted to half credit on your quiz. So we wanna watch out for that one. Now in number four, two X plus three equals four X minus seven. And I'm gonna to choose to start solving this by subtracting two X's from both sides. And again, there's multiple ways to start solving these problems. This is just the choice that I'm making in terms of starting. 4x minus 2x is 2x, bring down my minus seven. Then I'm gonna add seven to both sides. Three plus ten, seven is gonna give me 10 here. On the right hand side, I'm left with two times x. I finish by dividing both sides by two. I get down to x is five. And I'm not stopping off and circling this answer because I have to go back and use it. I go back to my figure, x is five, from S to M is two times five plus three. That's gonna be 10 plus three or 13. 
4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 7, yep, there's another 13. So how long is S to T? 13 and 13 makes 26. Just again, make sure that you're getting this, and if not, you're making some changes and notations for yourself. You can use these on your quiz. Now, yesterday in class, we went through, oh good, I have this here, I wasn't sure that I did. So yesterday in class, we went through, and I took a look at your little uh, patty papers when I did go through your stuff. You had to trace your, doc, your uh, object. I did it for number five, and I already folded it. For number six, let me just do this one so I have every problem done on my answer key. So once I've traced it, you need a piece? Uh, I don't think I have you tracing and folding on your quiz, if I remember correctly. And I'm lining up A and B, I'm putting a little fold. I come back over here and say, well, that fold then split it at its midpoint and label the midpoint. And then you guys staple those to your paper. Phenom. Now, numbers seven and eight. I'm gonna step away from using my, uh, I gotta get some color going on in here so I can separate my X's and Y's. In seven and eight, this is a matter of finding the midpoints. So we have to go and average the X values. I need to get down here and put a midpoint. The average of the X's is gonna be negative three plus nine divided by two. That's gonna be six divided by two. So the average of the X's is three. And then when I go do the average of the Y's, you know what, I'm gonna look at this. The average of two and two is two. You better have come up with two. I know that my Y values average is two. The average of two and two is two. The X was three. What are you looking for, dude? Line paper? There's some right there. Okay, just a student wandering aimlessly looking for paper. I'm still, what do you want? Go sit down, let him worry about himself. I know what he wants. Go give this to him, please. Oh my goodness, of course, Kyle, you're showing up in my video needing something. One plus seven, average of the two X's, eight over two. Oh my gosh. All right, average of my X's, of course. Average of my Y's, three plus five, divided by two. Thank you, Amir, my God. Eight, oh, four and four? Do you guys have that? I just went through it quick like and I didn't talk about it. The average of the X's, one and seven, eight divided by two is four. Let me just make sure my math was right because I was talking and distracted. Uh, so I wind up with the midpoint being at four and four. Now, before I go to the backside, um, sitting in front of me here in the first hour, any questions you guys might want me to address before I go on? Going okay? Go ahead. So this was straight up now, and like watch what it says in the direction. Straight up, find the midpoint. So you know, like you kind of said, do the long way. It, the, finding the midpoint is the average average. But when we go over to the backside, and I think this is probably where, if you're having trouble, it's going to be here, where it gives you the midpoint and tells you to find the missing endpoint. Both of these have a midpoint given. Now, if I remember right, when I think about my notes packet, we did problems like this. It was problems 10, 11, and 12 in our notes packet. If your notes packet is on your desk, make sure you can put your eyeballs on that because that, again, might be helpful for, like, right now going over it, but also at the same time with, during your quiz, do you have good examples that you can use during your quiz? Because, like I said, you can use your notes and your past work during a quiz. Now, I need to find point B in this case because they give me A. So I'm going to be looking for the other end point B in number 9. So what I have to do is go and consider that this end point A has an X value of 2. I'm looking for the missing X value on the other end. So 2 plus the missing X when I average it equals the midpoint's 2. Now, to go through and solve for this one, I asked the question a bazillion times. How do we undo, divide by 2? We multiply by 2. Check your math here. I was picking up on a lot of people not, like, doubling on the right. Like, putting 2 plus x equals 2. You had to double both sides. Just make sure that you're not making that error. And then when I take away 2 from both sides, I find out that the mixing x value is 2. Now, this looks super similar to the last problem. Look at all of our x's. They're two. 
Every x is 2. The average of 2 plus something divided by 2 was 2. It's all 2's for x. Now for the y value, I've got a missing y. I've got a known y. And so I'm dealing with the known y plus the missing y. When I average them, I'm going to get 5, the midpoints y. When I multiply both sides by 2, and again, right here, make sure you're doubling the right side, 3 plus y equals 10. When I subtract 3, I find out that the missing y is 7. So the average of point A and point B, 2 plus 2, the average of those is 2. The average of your y's then, 3 plus 7, is 5. 3 plus 7 is 10. Divide by 2, I get 5. Those were like what TJ was saying the long way. You know, you got to undo to get to the midpoint. Go ahead. No, 3 is the point. Yeah, I had that. A's point, the missing point. You see it? There you go. Good stuff. Say it again. I don't have another way to teach it to you, but we do have another problem to work out. Like, I, I wish I could come up with another way to teach this because it's kind of crazy. So just maybe listen careful as I go through and talk about how we're missing point A now, right? We're missing point A. So it's segment A, B, I'm missing A side. So the first thing I do is say, well, I'm missing an X, but I know that one of the X's and points is negative 1. So negative 1 plus the missing X, when I average that together, I get the negative 4 of the midpoint. So then I start the process of undoing. I'm slowing down just a hair. Go ahead. So when I multiply by 2, what it does is it cancels the 2 in the denominator. That's why this numerator stays the same. There you go. Well, that's what we're undoing. So it cancels out. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Make changes on your paper so you have something to look at tomorrow during your quiz. So then when I add 1 to both sides, x is equal to negative 8 plus 1 is going to put me at negative 7 for that missing x. Now, when I go and do the y's, then I'm missing this y for b. When I go do the y's, I'm still with negative 1 plus, now it's a missing y. When I divide by 2 to average it, I get negative 4. Huh, I have a feeling I know how this is going to go. I think so too, because these were exactly the same, these were exactly the same. Let's see. When I undo, divide by 2, cancels out, negative 1 plus y equals negative 8. When I add 1 to both sides, yep, y is negative 7. And we, I think what Baldwin was noticing is negative 4, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1. Is this a surprise? No. That's actually the equation for this line would be x equals y. They're the same. The equation for this line would be x equals y because they're exactly the same. Now this was something totally different when we go on to number 11 and 12. This had to do <coughs> with the distance formula. And when we, have, um, when we have to find the distance between points, it's all about finding lengths. And I'm using the shortcut every time I present it. I have x's and y's. Q is 5, 6. 5 for x, 6 for y. P is 1, 3. Then I am asking the question, how far apart are these? Four units. How far apart are these? Three units. I saw a lot of you guys get to this, but then not finish. Because remember, there was that big long formula. You got to go in, put it under a radical, and square the sum of the square these and add them. So this would be the square root of 16 plus 9. It works out to be the square root of 25. How far apart are Q to P? Five. Circle that at the end. That's okay. That's okay. Five is the answer. Square root of 25 is the answer. And then what um, Jamar was just pointing out is he had written it. I'm assuming you wrote it as 3 squared plus 4 squared. You still got 25, right? There you go. So just make sure that you're following through. A lot, of, so a lot of people stop off just right here after you made your little T-chart and said how far apart. Number 12. X 
y, g is 2, 5, sits here, h is 4, negative 1, sits here. How far apart? 2 to 4, 2. How far apart are 5 and negative 1? Careful with this, 6. Use the number line. Think about the number line. If you actually need to draw a number line on the front of your math folder or something, so be it. Use it. How far apart? Where, where are we now? So the length of this, I got to square those. 2 plus, 2 squared plus 6 squared. That's going to be the square root of, make sure you're still bringing down your radical until we actually go and unsquare in the end. That's going to be 4 plus 36. Square root of 40. When you put that in your calculator, what do you get? Six point something. 6.32 is approximately the length of, oh, no, this is GH. Come over and put that it's equal to or approximately equal to our segment GH, just so I can see that you understand the notation. GH is this long. And then I'm actually going to stop the video because 13 is going to take a few minutes and I want to be able to talk about it individually in class.